Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, I'm with Wikibon.org, and this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's continuous production of VMworld 2013. This is our fourth year here. Uh, year one and four have been at Moscone, we were in Las Vegas a couple years ago, Rick Jackson was on earlier, locked in a 10-year deal with <laughs> San Francisco and the Mos Moscone, so we're very happy about that. And uh, we've been unpacking VMware, its transformation uh, into uh, the cloud, going beyond the core hypervisor beyond vSphere into other management areas, but you know, the key thing about VMware is it's got a large ecosystem, and the ecosystem players are critical to the continu continuous growth and, and development of, of the VMware platform. David West is here, he's the Senior Vice President of Worldwide Marketing at Commvault, who was part of that ecosystem, uh, a specialist in data and data protection, archiving, and getting value out of data. David, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, thanks for having me, Dave. Oh, our, our pleasure, so, um, so anyway, VMworld, is, uh, we're here in our 10th uh, year, 15 year old company. You've seen the evolution of, of VMware as this disruptive force in, in the industry. Talk about that a little bit and what it's meant to, to Commvault. Yeah, I have, I mean, uh, I, I remember not too long ago, seven, eight years ago, meeting with, with VMware folks and they were saying, look, we see uh, this is a journey. We're going to start by getting customers to consolidate uh, for, for efficiency, and then we're going to move to the next phase of getting mission critical applications on a virtualized environment, and, and we see that as a, a massive transformation in how companies manage their data and information in a virtualized environment. And old approaches to you know, data and information management just, just can't keep up in the new modern infrastructure. Well, and uh, you know, I, I remember those discussions, and, and there were a lot of skeptics. I, I had some skepticism, and I'm sure you did too. You have to say, VMware's done a great job of, 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 of executing on that. You know, Paul Moritz used to call it the software mainframe, and his marketing guys made him stop. But I mean, essentially, that's what they've built. Right. You know, yep. with commodity components. Um, and, of course, Commvault is known as a, as a backup specialist. You know, you're a leader in that space. You do a lot more than that. I want to get into that. But, but the whole data protection piece has changed dramatically because of virtualization. You've seen that evolved. So maybe talk about that a little bit and then we can get into some of the other areas that you guys are involved in. Yeah, sure, so, you know, um, backup and recovery in a virtualized environment, especially when you're putting mission critical applications on it, looks, looks very different. Um, and, and it's not just applying a point level solution at, you know, solving a, you know, a VM backup. It's having an application aware view and abstracting the storage layer with technologies that are leveraged um, uh, from the storage layer to do snapshot management uh, with application aware um, protection. And, and that has to be done in a completely different way than, than the old approaches. And I think that's what we're seeing today is uh, companies that are putting their mission critical apps in a virtualized environment are looking for a way to get the SLAs that they need now that they've got you know, massive amounts of, uh, of, of applications all in on a server. Yeah, so that's a key. That's a key piece of, a, of the business decision. It's okay, if I'm going to put this thing into, if I'm going to virtualize it, first of all, I'm going to put a layer in, I got to make sure that I'm going to have the service level. So give me some, some examples, some proof points. How is Commvault sort of supporting that, that trend? Well, I mean, first of all, Commvault is probably best known for being a leader in the, the data protection space for backup and recovery. And, and, and that growth of Commvault is coming because you know, the old approaches just don't work anymore. Now you layer on top of that virtualized environments and it just adds to the complexity. So what Commvault is doing is saying, look, let's, let's start with making sure we understand the application and then tie into the storage layer underneath to make sure that we can do very fast performance. And so about 80% of our customers today are using you know, Commvault to manage their virtualized environments. It's, it's a huge trend we're seeing. So when you say manage their virtualized environments, can, can you be more specific? Like what kinds of things are they doing with, with Commvault in the platform? Well, so you, you probably saw last week we announced uh, a new solution for uh, you know, addressing for VM sprawl. So, um, you know, Many of our customers are starting with solving backup and recovery. Uh, they're moving to managing uh, replication, archiving, and compliance. Uh, but it goes beyond that. As, as VM has, uh, virtualization has, has gotten predominant, now they're, they're worried about how do I handle the sprawl, for example. So Commvault's approach is, let me give a set of tools and solutions that address you know, how do I make my virtualized environment a lot more efficient. Yeah, so the interesting thing to me about Commvault is, you sit at the, at the heart of what you do is, is data. 
Um, and you've got a lot of data about the data. You know, people call it metadata. Even New York Times writes about metadata now. Metadata has gone mainstream. So, you know, the frustration that people always have with backup is that it's, it, first of all, it's, an, you know, it's seen as insurance policy. It's always an afterthought, it's sort of bolted on. Um, and, and it doesn't add, it intrinsically doesn't add any direct business value. So how do you take the, the data that you have and the information about that data and get additional value out of it, whether it's for other use cases like archiving or, or, or how do you help people you know, reduce copies or protect you know, things off site? Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so um, I think you raise a good point. It, it, it is all about the data. Uh, and I think backup and recovery has gone from a back office operation to how do I take all my data under management and turn it into a business value, a business asset. So Commvault starts with the premise of you got to do it in a single platform. A single platform that does backup, archive, replication, search and e-discovery, all through a single platform. And Sampana's but, been that for since you know, early days, right? Sampana stands for Singular Information Management. That's the SIM in Sampana. Mm -hmm. So yes, I mean that's fundamentally what we believe in. It starts with a single approach. I very efficiently move that data, no matter what the purpose is for, all within a single platform. And as I'm doing that and moving that data, I garner intelligence. I have the metadata, I understand the application that created it, I understand about the files, I understand about the content inside of it. So it's not just about making sure I'm protected for disaster recovery, or I've got a, an archive for compliance, but how do I take that massive amount of protected data that's been sitting in you know, retention copies and add that back to the lines of business for, uh, you know, as a business asset that they can go and tap into and mine for information. So we're kind of turning it upside down. We're turning the whole paradigm shift from I got a protected copy to how do I take that protected copy that lives on multiple tiers of storage and now feed that back into you know, a healthcare environment, uh, you know, the, the mobile workforce, uh, your, your compliance teams, and give them that data rather than going deploying a separate product for you know, compliance or a separate product for archiving. Yeah, so everybody's big data crazy. Uh, we're big data crazy too here at theCUBE. But, um, but it's interesting, Dave, because you know, historically, data has been a problem. It's been you know, data growth. Data has been something that has to be managed. It's a liability. You know, when can I get rid of data? As I'm sure you've got you know, ISVs doing e-discovery using you know, your your platform and so on. So you know this story well. And, and I feel as though the big data meme has flipped that bit and has has got people focused on data as a, a, an asset, you right. know, more than a, a liability. So what you just said, you, you, uh, first of all, are you seeing that, and how will Commvault capitalize on that? Yeah, so I mean, th I think the whole big data trend is just you know, driven a conversation around, wow, I've got this data, I've got this information, what, what can I do with it to make better decisions? So you know, our view of it is, when you've got a backup copy in an archive, let's not lose sight of the fact that there's business value there, and it's living on you know, multiple tiers of storage across lots of different hardware vendors and off to tape and into the cloud. So with Commvault, since we understand where all that data is, where it lives, and we know what created it in the context, how do we then turn that back over as uh, an asset through a set of APIs and interfaces to mine it? That's big data. That's mining all that information across these tiers of storage. And I think what's different is people haven't historically thought about backup and archive copies as a source of big data. Mm -hmm. It's let's go build a you know, hardware appliance and throw it in there and you know, you know, give a set of tools to analyze it. And I'm saying, well, why do that? You've got all this information, make it available, make it accessible with a set of interfaces. And you've got metadata that can help guide you. Okay, so. Well, not just metadata, we've got the metadata, but also yeah, yeah. we've got an engine that goes and, 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 and creates you know, an index of the data within the data. Yeah, and so, but so because you know so much about the data, you know, when it was created, you know, who owns it, what applications it, it, it feeds, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you can actually do something with it as opposed to have to, what you described before is let's stick it in a box and figure right. out what we want to do yep. with it as opposed to, okay, we know the characteristics of that data, now let's try to leverage it throughout the organization for different use cases. Um, so you talked about the VMware sprawl you know, problem. The other problem is copy creep, I call it. You know, there's copies everywhere around the organization. I'm sure you're seeing that, that as well. You know, we estimated the other day that for every you know, master copy, there's probably you know, eight or 10 additional copies you know, created. 
Do you see that as a challenge within, within the customer base? And so what we're talking about here, can you help address that problem in any right. way? Right, yeah. So I think copy creep is, is kind of one of the pillars of how we got into this business, right? When we, we looked at helping customers reduce their storage footprint, i.e. their costs and, and improve operations, it starts with a premise that says, stop creating silos or copies of the data. I don't need a, you know, three backup vendors all creating their own silo of data and then you know, another couple archive vendors creating its own stack of, of, of data. So our premise that got into business is to wipe all that out, start with a single platform and make real efficient copies that are deduplicated and that are super efficient on the back end. Which, you know, check that box, that's what got us into the game. Now we go back and say, look, um, we've got data sitting out at the edge, and a lot of data, and it's becoming mission critical. We're seeing you know, a lot of data moving. So we've introduced you know, tools within the Sampana platform that go grab edge data and also move it into a very efficient copy to slow that copy creep that you mentioned earlier. Yeah, so we you talked earlier about sort of a set of APIs that people can use to get into your platform. So you've got the entries and exits uh, you know, there. Another big theme that's going on in the industry is, is, is openness, new platforms, new orchestration platforms like, like, like OpenStack. So what are you seeing there, and, and again, how do you capitalize on that? Yeah, yeah, so I mean, when we talk about software-defined data center, really it's about you know, an intelligent set of you know, software-based solutions that you know, can abstract the, the, the complex underneath to, to create efficiencies, and um, you know, for us, what we're seeing is um, using a set of software-based data management tools that then allow our customers to go in and create API sets to go grab that data. So openness for us is a set of APIs into our content store. So when we create these, these copies of data um, for backup archive replication that are you know, in, a, in an efficient state, sit within what we call the content store. That's our backend repository. So we have created a set of tools that allow um, users and partners to tap into the content store through a set of APIs. So for example, uh, you may have an application uh, inside a homegrown application, you say, hey look, I need to go and, and tap into that data to go grab healthcare images. So through a set of APIs, customers can then go in and say, based on this criteria or these set of policies, go and pull out that information from our archives. Do you see, um, or how do you see analytics, just be a policy-based, uh, of, of information management has been around, at least in concept for a while, you guys have been doing it on a, on a platform. <clears throat> As the amount of data grows and the complexity of the problem grows, do you see the day where you can actually use analytics to automate a lot of, and you may be doing some of this today, automate a lot of that, that policy management and decision making so that the machines are actually taking care of it instead of, instead of humans? To what degree are we there today and, and how far can we take it? Yeah, so, you know, absolutely we, we, we believe that's where the market's going. Uh, for, from Commvault's perspective, you know, our contribution to that is we have a very sophisticated policy engine. And based on rules and policies that the customer creates, we are able to go in and make things happen. So it could be move information across multi-vendor tiers on the back based on a set of criteria and that could be for uh, lowering storage costs or for migration strategies or test dev or replication uh, between sites. So you create a policy, you know, separate that layer from the storage, and then you can you know, create some back end. We can also do, based on policies, which we you know, consider our, our workflow set of tools, where customers can have, um, you know, based on A-B parameters, they can go in and have a whole bunch of back end operations happen that used to be done in scripting, that now happen in our software. So we really believe that the intelligence needs to be in the software, and it needs to be policy driven, and it needs to understand the infrastructure from the storage layer, to the server layer, to the virtualized virtual mm -hmm. layer, and the networking layer. Awesome, all right, my last question, as we run out of time here, is what should we be watching for out of Commvault? We're you know, independent observers, watching the company, <coughs> You know, milestones you want to hit, you know, things that you want to move the industry on, just break yep. it down over the next, say, you know, 12 to 18 months. Yeah, so, you know, Commvault, knock on wood, we, we, we've been on a, a great revenue track, and I think the customers appreciate the value proposition, and it starts with fixing broken backup, but looking beyond it to, you know, holistic data management approach. 
Uh, we're on a track to a billion dollars. We, we've stated that, that's where the company is going. Uh, we got a plan to get there. From a kind of, what are we doing in the marketplace? I think it is that transformation from you know, your backup and archive being a afterthought backend process to how do we open up this repository and give business users the value that they need. Uh, you're going to see us push a lot harder in terms of marketing that message. I think we've got a great portfolio of products today, but we're going to be driving a lot more uh, users and partnerships uh, to go then and tap into that data for business. So whether it's you know, taking your, your, your mobile applications and giving users access to all that information, that's something we deliver today. So that shift from backup and archive to tapping into that data for business value and intelligence and insights. Yeah, there aren't a, lot, there aren't a ton of billion dollar software companies, so that's a, that's a huge milestone for, for a company like yours. You guys have been around long enough to earn the right you know, to get into the enterprise. So congratulations on the success. You know, good luck, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. Thanks a lot, really a pleasure. Appreciate All right, it. keep it right there everybody, this is Dave Vellante, this is theCUBE, we're right back live from VMworld 2013.